Like many things at this point in 2021, Google I.O. this year has been a bit different. With no in-person get-togethers or sessions, Google took things completely online and opened things up to anyone and everyone who wanted to attend. Though totally virtual, a lot of what makes Google I.O. special still remained. We still had a main keynote, a developer keynote, smaller keynotes, and a bunch of sessions over the past few days. And it's a lot to take in as it always is. So as Chromebook fans, we wanted to put together a list of seven key takeaways from IO that will affect Chrome OS and Chromebook users moving forward. So let's get into it. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of users, and that's for good reason. They're awesome at what they do. That's keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN, and there you can learn more and get started. First up, let's talk about a sweet new trick that's coming to the phone hub. We know this space on Chromebooks is going to expand over time and will likely offer more and more cool stuff down the road, but this new feature we're talking about today was actually shown off during the main keynote and it looks really awesome. The idea is simple. The latest few photos you just took on your connected phone will simply be part of the phone hub interface for you to copy, paste, or drag wherever you need them. I imagine a scenario where I've captured a featured image for a new post and I need to get it into Gravit to tweak it for the website. As soon as I take the photo, sit back at my desk, that photo will be right there in the phone hub tray, ready for use without the need of manual file transfers or a visit to Google Photos. It's small, it's simple, but it sounds awesome and I can't wait to use it. Another big announcement for Android 12 was the introduction of the new Material U design language. It's a big departure from the existing material design Google employs currently, and I honestly love everything about it. From the colors, to the animations, to the UI elements, this looks like a great shift for Google in the design department across the board. During that presentation, it was also made clear that Material U wasn't just for Android, but would be coming to Chrome OS as well. While we don't know exactly which parts will show up or when, it's exciting to look at the new designs and imagine what Chrome OS will eventually look like with this sort of paint job. Next up, web apps. While not specific to Chromebooks only, web apps and their capabilities play a big role in the overall user experience of Chrome OS. In one of the sessions concerning new functionality for web-based applications, we've learned that a few new tricks are on the way that'll make web apps feel even more native than before. Two of those changes we wanna highlight are app shortcuts and notification badges. App shortcuts are simply the options in a pop-up menu you see when you right-click or long press an icon. As an example, an app like Twitter will have the ability to give you direct access to things like DMs, notifications, search, and new tweet creation right from the icon without needing to actually open the application first. It's a nice touch and again, something that Android apps already do. Additionally, web apps are getting notification badges like we see with Android apps. You know them and either love them or hate them, but notification badges are the little dots that sit to the side of an app icon to let you know that something needs or wants your attention. I'm glad to see them coming to web apps really soon. Next up, let's talk quickly about Linux and the fact that Finally, Linux is exiting beta status on Chromebooks. The team reports improvements across the board in performance, capabilities, updates, and it seems like things are ironed out enough for Google to finally call Linux a full-fledged part of the Chrome OS experience. It's been a long time coming, but we're happy to see what feels like the maturation of this years-long endeavor. This next one may feel a bit obscure, but it's indicative of developers moving in a very positive direction. Unity, the engine many developers use to build amazing games, is adding Chrome OS as a development target in the coming months. This simply means that game makers can build games and completely tailor them for Chrome OS from the ground up, and that's encouraging. We may finally start to see some developers building experiences for Chromebooks that from the beginning, from the get-go, were meant to be experienced on a larger screen with a keyboard and mouse and touch and controller support. Can you imagine desktop class Android games built specifically for Chromebooks? I can, and I can't wait to see what that could look like in the future. Another great under the hood addition is the new low latency stylus API that's coming for Chrome OS. Sure, there are a few Android apps out there that get stylus latency right, but most don't. 
We assume this is due to the large amount of work it must take to make apps like Squid work so fluidly. With this new API, it seems more app developers will be able to plug into the existing functionality for their apps moving forward and deliver great pen experiences in a much simpler way. Hopefully, this means that every drawing or handwriting app out there will update over time and the vast majority of pen-driven applications on Chromebooks will be far better to use in the future than they are currently. Finally, we knew this last one was coming and is already a reality for some users, but Google has made it very official in multiple sessions at I.O. that Android 11 is on the way for Chrome OS and many devices, and this time it'll be living in a fresh new virtual machine instead of the old Arc container. What's that mean? Well, basically it makes Android more stable, gives users access to the latest APIs and features, it improves security, it makes everything far more maintainable, it reduces the divergence from mainline Android, and it makes it simpler to keep Android up to date in the future. These are all huge wins from any perspective, and we're glad to see Google continuing to take the friction out of making great Android app experiences on Chromebooks. But for now, that's it. Those are your seven key takeaways from Google I.O. 2021 that you can be on the lookout for over the next weeks or months. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and make sure and click that notification bell next to it if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.